You ever wonder if you're better or worse now than you used to be? Like if you had a time machine and you went back and you wanted to compete head to head against your old self, would you beat them? I mean, obviously we all want to think that time and experience has led us to be better than we were before. But just ask this boat. Well, today I'm going to find out. I'm going to go in direct competition with myself from 50 years ago? Or as my wife so kindly summarized. It's your past self with a leg up from current self against current self with legs. The model I'll be competing against is this beautiful business card holder. It features gears, spinny things, and a cranky doodle. For this, I'm just going to give the design a little bit of a facelift, and I think it'll make the effect a lot cooler. Yeah, that's the stuff. This assembly has 17 parts. 11 of which are 3D printed, and the other six purchased parts. I start out by pressing one of the 608 bearings into the back of the rear rotor, and then mounting it on the spire from the front rotor. Not that it's required for the next process, I just find it satisfying. Next, I struggle greatly to install a 608 bearing into its housing, until the frame cracks, giving way and allowing the bearing to enter. My past self will surely lose points with the judges for this. Next, the crank handle is installed onto the crank arm using the quarter inch screw. This maneuver is hard to classify. Just watch it a few times in a row and you'll figure it out. Further frame cracks are the result of poor planning on the part of my past self. Now I install the largest round washer onto the spire of the plate assembly. Then force and jam the rear sprocket into its position. Seriously, did this guy think about assembly at all during the design? We now thread the plate assembly in through the bearing set, leaving a little bit of space to somehow fit the final square washer in behind the back sprocket. Oh my god, this is pure hell. We just slide the crank, just slides on there, eh? It just, and it, what keeps it on there, no, nothing? Okay, that looks pretty nice, I guess. Okay, I have to make an admission to you guys, and those of you who have been following me for a long time already know this, but the first product that you just saw was based on something by another artist. His name was David Roy. Hi, I'm David Roy. He started making these wall pieces and, you know, half the internet has already copied this design and it's really not that exciting. But because this is a head-to-head -head challenge, I'm going to go up against that design with another lifted design. That makes sense, right? I'm going to steal someone else's art to go up against the last thing that I stole. And that makes it okay. So anyways, have you ever heard of William Darrell? He's cool. He did some really interesting things. Most of it is based around the idea of a central drive with a bunch of cones coming outward, like in a flower petals. And the cones are mapped with spirals. And the way that those spirals interact, you, you see these shapes kind of morphing in a really cool way. Anyways, I think it's really cool, and so I'm gonna make one, and that's how it's gonna be. Let's go. Lovely. The wings on the design all sprout from the central hub where they all mesh in a circle. Uh, fun fact, that means that you would only be able to make one of these with an even number of arms because each gear inverts the direction.
that's also why my drive shaft only engages with three of the gears. And you can see here where one of them is going against the rotation of the input shaft, and it's just narrowly being missed. That's why it's been, it's been brought in towards the center there, because the shaft is hollow. So that shaft brings our input uh, far enough back that we are uh, avoiding collision with the arms. And that's it. Pretty simple. Uh, I will note that um, William Darrell does this kind of opposite to what I'm doing here. His input shaft comes out the center and then descends down towards the output of the wings uh, through uh, some idler gears. But anyways, yeah, just thought I'd try a different drive concept than what he was using. And uh, there, there you go. I have, you might notice, not have used any vitamins for this this design and that's on purpose um, i've learned through a few years of doing this stuff that if you make someone go out and buy a screw or a ball bearing or any odd thing the odds that they will actually make your design plummets so uh, as my gift to the community this is a hundred percent 3d printable um, i use uh, kind of sparse contact joints for uh, for rotation uh, instead of a bearing uh, here at the end of things you'll see these little rods that's actually intended to be a piece of 1.75 millimeter filament so you'd cut the filament to length uh, and that acts as a spacer and as a kind of uh, low friction rotational contact aside from that there might be a few things that are set to be glued right now in the current design but I could just as easily see them being some kind of snap fit all in all, I think it's really great and really pretty, and I like to watch it spin. So who's the winner? Is it past self? Is it current self? Well, obviously current self wins. I'm way better. I, I'm always getting better and I'm never gonna die. But also in a very real way, I wanted to get across how much empathy this process got me for my past self. I know in the original part of the video, the first part of the video, I'm making fun of all of the mistakes this guy made and I'm, I'm cracking wise and I'm throwing my little artist's pen at it and trying to make it all pretty so that I can pretend like I'm just, just light years ahead. But honestly, that guy was pretty good at what he did. There's just sort of differences between us. I am now a father and a family man and I've got this whole mess to try to work on uh, and fix up and stuff and as a result I have much much less time and I have taken quite a bit of time to make this video. You'll see I am much more bearded and I think this is my third shirt of the whole filming process. Realizing that one of the strengths that earlier Paul had that I do not have is time. He worked a lot to get to the skills and, and to get the projects actually some kind of done. Hopefully you guys are all winners in this as well because you'll know from the saga of these videos that I am releasing all of these designs out on my GitHub for mutual use and collaboration. The first design is already up and ready to go. Probably could use a few changes. If you're feeling uh, like you want to be part of this project and you want to make those changes, the source file steps are up there and you can make edits and request, do pull requests and we'll, we'll, we'll update the GitHub to make sure that the most bestest design is ready to go. The second design, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of time right now. I got to do taxes in a second here, but I will release that model as well uh, with no warranty at all because I have not test printed any of that. There's experimental joint connectors. Some of it still needs glue, but it's kind of cool. And if you want to get ahead of me and make it, please do. That said, if you do want to see how that turns out, and if you made it this far in the video, obviously you're my type of person. So please, please subscribe. Honestly, I am trying to make this my full-time gig showing you guys cool mechanisms, giving you cool things to print and make yourselves. I want to do it. I want this to be my job. So please subscribe, join in and, um, and let's grow this community and let's, let's make some cool things. And yeah, see you next time. Bye.